welcome to Sweethearts or Arrivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. What are we doing today? Daxu! We're going to be doing a review today. Yep. Daxu is a two-player game. Mm -hmm. It can take you about 30 minutes, and they recommend you can play it with people that are ages 10 and up. The 30 minutes is kind of funny, because once you've played this several times, it doesn't take 30 minutes to play. Definitely doesn't feel like 30 minutes, even no. if it was 30 minutes. <laughs> Alright, what do you think of the components of Daxu? I like the components of Daxu. Um, I mean, they're basic components because you've just got a board, you've got your player pawns, and you've got cards. Yeah. But I like that the cards, is a nice linen finish. Mm -hmm. They're not too linen-y that when you shuffle them together, they all stick together. Yeah, you don't have that problem, which is nice. Yes, yeah. and it's a good thicker quality cardstock, mm -hmm. but it's not overly thick either, so they shuffle really nice. This yeah. is a good shuffling type of card. And also, it's got the white back, uh, the right border around, yeah. so if you do end up nicking one it's not really going to show too much on what it is so you can important nick your, like mark your cards yeah and uh yeah more game designers should should realize that black bordered cards are not good if you're not supposed to know what's on the other side of the cards right but they might just think everyone sleeps the cards maybe we don't <laughs> there's too many games That's too right. many sleeps yep. uh there's a nice little graphic uh design um little piece here these three sections have kind of like a an icon with a square around it and then mm -hmm. these three have the circle just to keep track of these three scored differently than these three so that's kind right. of cool the circles are better than squares i guess yep yep art's good Everything's i like functional. the art yeah and i like that they use nice different colors i'm not sure if um see i'm not colorblind though so i don't know mm. if like these two are too similar true um or even if those two are too similar i don't know yeah. But I find like these cards on this side are nice and bright. Yep. And they're worth the more points. And these mm. ones are kind of more, you know, neutrally. Yeah. And they're the more neutrally points. Yeah. Again, very nice. Uh, I will say that very minor, minor quip, but I, I don't like the board that much. Uh, the box is small enough that this board needs to be folded like into three pieces. And um, it doesn't unfold very well. It's It's been packed so tightly that when you unfold it, it's very difficult to get it to lie flat. Mm -hmm. Minor, minor quibble. Yeah. That's about it. I think the more we use it, though, the more it's going to get flat. Yeah. And all you have to do, you have to be really careful, and you can just kind of bend it the other way. Yep. Carefully. Because it would be horrible if you just, it, oh, I can't even think about it. Yeah. And don't tear your boards apart. Yeah. <laughs> Even on a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> it's upsetting. Anyway, what do you think about the strategy, which we lump in all the strategy, tactics, and luck? Yep. Um, this game has a little bit of strategy, but not a lot. And where that little bit of strategy comes in is uh, when the game begins, you're given eight cards to get your initial setup. And so that's going to be a little bit kind of long-term strategy because when we started, I didn't have any of uh, the rugs. I didn't have any of the tea houses and you had some. So I was like, do I really want to try to get those a lot? Or do I just want to constantly throw them on your side and make you go over and bust? Right. But you have to get a couple of them or you're not yeah. going to get any points at all. Right. So that, that kind of opening hand of cards will give you a little bit of strategy, but... Compared to the amount of tactics in this game, the strategy is very little, and the tactics are very, very high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's a bit of luck thrown in randomness when you flip over what three cards are available. Yeah. You never know what's going to come out. There's always two cards taken out of the deck before you start the mm -hmm. game. So there's that randomness, that tactics. Um, even more so than the randomness, though, is, is more of a, a, the kind of player chaos or the mind games. Mm -hmm. Because when you're actually playing the game, it's these four cards. And that's it. Yeah. And yet, the interactions between these four cards are a lot, and there's a lot to keep track mm -hmm. of. Well, it does have this little handy reminder as yeah. well. And it does take a little bit of getting used to what all this means for what happens when you play the same card or different card or this card and how they all interact. Mm -hmm. um, it's a surprising amount of game for four cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's awesome. It's all about what do I think that he thinks that he thinks about what I think. Yeah. It's all that whole... Yeah. And all the mind games that come with it. Yeah. Which is why... It's a two-player only game because mm -hmm. as soon as you get into more than two players, the amount of 
trying to figure out who knows yeah, what no, becomes is, so overwhelming you can't do it. It's perfect for two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you can play it two player against someone you know really well. It's even crazier. Yeah. yeah. Which is, and you always get those, wait, I thought you were going to do this and you didn't do that. Why did you do that? No! Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. So there's that. Um, and then, of course, the other, the other kind of thing that throws in there is the whole reputation track because that can either be a tactical thing where you just happen to go for the good cards that give you bonuses to mm -hmm. reputation, or it can be a strategy. You'd be like, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice stuff all the time so I can just bring my reputation up right at the beginning. Because it gives you a lot of advantages. Mm -hmm. When your reputation up, it's not just points. When your reputation is higher than someone, if you both say you can have it, mm -hmm. it's the person with the lower rep who gets it, who didn't want it. Right. When you both say I want it, when you're the person who has the rep, you get it, which is what you wanted. So having re high reputation mm -hmm. helps... Helps manipulate that yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that could be a strategy or it could just be a tactic. It's right. kind of up to how you want to play the game. But it works really well when you like get your rep up high. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. It certainly adds. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what about the complexity of Daxu? I don't find it's overly complex. It's just to really get a handle on the scoring. Yeah. Because you've always got to be watching. You really only want one card more than your opponent. Yeah. But usually in a game, you want more and more and more. So it's kind of a little tricky to get that concept. But yeah. once you've got a handle on it, it's okay. Yeah, it can be a little tricky when there's ties. So it's awesome that there's this little summary card. Yeah. And once you get used to these icons on here, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So it's just getting used to the icons on here. And then actually here too, like um, when you have more than four over someone and more than three over someone. Yeah. Once you get a handle on those icons, it's really easy. Yep. Um, a lot of the times when we'll play, we'll actually have this one down on that side to remind us that it's this side of the board. And then this one we'll keep down here before it's this side. So we can mm -hmm. kind of keep the scoring. Uh, a big part of it is you're constantly counting cards. Mm -hmm. And the game can go so fast that you don't pause for a minute to count cards and you need to. Exactly. Yeah. And you just mean counting cards on either yeah. side versus... Exactly. But like I got one, two, three, four, two, one, two, three. Yes, I'm beating her by one. That's going to give me five points. Right. But you can also count cards this way too because there's going to be a finite amount of cards in the deck. Yep. But there's always going to be two removed. Yeah. So you can count cards to a certain extent to know, like, oh, there might be one more bread card. Oh, but it could be the one that's not in the <laughs> the deck this time. Yeah. So that you can kind of play around with that a little bit, too. And you do actually have to keep an eye on how many cards are left in the deck. Because as soon as you get to the point where I need to put three more art and there's not three, the game is just over. Mm -hmm. So there's some timing there as well. And what do you think about the playability? Uh, the playability. First of all, mechanisms versus theme. The mechanisms in this game are very thematic, which is very neat. Except for that little twist, which makes thematic sense, but you're used to having, like, if I have all of the tea houses, then I'm winning. But in this game, everyone looks at your monopoly of tea houses and says, we're going to the mom and pop stores, so there's only two of them. Because mm -hmm. you're just taking over, and that's not cool. Right. So there's this very interesting kind of reputation theme going on where you don't want to have most of them which is kind of funny mm -hmm. um, but having this side of the streets mine and that's your side of the street and our reputation and and even these cards to make total like thematic sense yeah. it's all and even awesome. our little people like we're walking on either side of the street and we're yeah. always checking out what our other competition is doing across the street yeah yeah. And if you're down here, it means you're in like the dark alley where <laughs> you're skulking around. But if you're up here, you're in the light and people are like, oh, we love you. Right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> my reputation is so bad. I need, <laughs> I need a bigger hood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's funny. Um, there's no scalability because it's a two-player only game, of right. course. The game length is super short. When you get used to playing, you could probably get this done within 20 minutes, mm -hmm. um, which means a lot of the time you will be playing this more than once in a row. It's a really great filler for mm -hmm. two people. It is, because I find sometimes in the end, the points don't shake out how you expect them to. It's like, it's so unpredictable that way. It's like, well, we have to play again, because yeah. I need to beat you. <laughs> 
And it's also really funny how everything is going your way and one or two things, mm -hmm. like one or two rounds can change everything. Yeah, so fast. Yeah, and I think that's a really great way to balance the game because if if this, if this having all of these would be winning against this, there's nothing I can do about that. Right. But where you're trying to keep everything as close to even as possible, it means things can shift like that. Mm -hmm. So that's awesomely amazing. Right. Yeah. It makes those moments like those yell out loud moments. Yeah. 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 Which is awesome. It's really good. Um, and so, yeah, replayability is, I mean, you're playing the same game over and over again, but because most of it's all the mind games anyway, mm -hmm. just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. So, does it have the cuteness? Does it have the awesomeness? Oh, it's got such cute art, but it's so awesome as well. It's going to have to be equal awesomeness to cuteness, I think. Yeah. Especially since they did make this purple. It actually reminds me a little bit of At the Gates of Loyang. The artwork does. Yeah. It's very nice. Usually this is the spot where we talk about what kind of game group it would be good for, but since it's a two-player game, it's kind of tricky to recommend. Yeah. Um... But it's going to be really good, of course, for two people that know each other really well. Yeah. Especially if you can get into those mind games of predicting what each person's going to do. Or thinking that you've predicted. Yeah. Or thinking that you've <laughs> predicted what they predicted that you might be thinking. There you go. Right. <laughs> Are we going to trade this or keep it? Keep it. Yeah, this is a keeper for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. The very first time I saw it being played in a playthrough, I knew I wanted it. It took me two, like watches like to kind of I need to check out this more before I realize we need to get that game mm -hmm. yeah well and especially when we saw that it's designed by the same guy as Gold West yeah and Gold West is a really cool game too yeah that's so. awesome excellent so when we play a game of Daxu do we finish it as sweethearts or rivals we finish it as rivals, rivals. oh yeah of course and it's funny that I don't know if it's a mark of like how awesome the game is or just the sp the, the the particular like gameplay that this game has but to have a game that short become a rivalry game is impressive actually very impressive because usually if you're not too invested I find the more I play for longer yeah the more invested I get and the yep. more rivalry I'll have yeah but this game has rivalry right out of the gate yeah yeah it's also funny that there you can have a little bit of long-term strategy, but not a ton, because usually that gets you to, into more like kind of rivalry. Because mm -hmm. oh, you foiled my plans, but mm -hmm. no, this one just again right out of the gate. Yeah, awesome. That is Daxu. It is. Right. On. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video. Later's.